you know, back in my dark days, I didn't, I, didn't, I thought, you know, the way we are is just the way we are. And, it's, and change wasn't possible. And it's really hard when you're in that spiral, whether it's an addiction or in depression uh, or, or in anything else, it's very hard to see things from another way. I mean, I know it through experience. I know, I know, I know, I now know that that kind of change is possible. And to me, that's the biggest um, miracle of human life that, 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 that you can change. You know, it's, it's a very simple thing to say, but it's really hard to, uh, to actually do. Um, Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Streamline to Scale. Uh, today, we have the lovely Robin Burke here, a fantastic marketing strategist, email email marketing wizard, and the guy who can help you find some lost money in your list. So thank you, Robin, for being here this morning. How are you? Thanks, Michelle. I'm doing great. Great to be here with you. Great to be live on Facebook. <laughs> it's fun. I don't do this much. Uh, it's great that you've been doing this these last, I don't know, two, three months, maybe. Um, great practice for you. I've caught quite a few of them and it's made me think I should, I should try doing this more. You know, it's really good for uh, getting yourself out there, your message out there, all of that. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun getting to feature people. So, and like getting to like hear more of their stories and have them like, you know, tell more of what you do because it's just a way to, to just share more of your story. So I appreciate you one being on and listening to other people's stories, but also, you know, joining us today to give us some more of your story. You know, I know, I know we met through a few masterminds. I think we met in copy accelerator to start and, uh, and we met there a couple times. I always really enjoyed our conversations. You have a really, really interesting background and story and just, you know, way you've kind of overcome a lot of things, but also built a really incredible business for yourself and are bringing on team members and everything as well as helping clients find, find lost money in their list. Like, and, you know, I'm really intrigued to hear a little bit more about how you do this today. So, um, yeah, just... First, I would love to say hello, thank you, welcome, and I'd love to hear a little bit more from you on your story and, like, you know, how you kind of got to this position and this place. Thanks. Yeah, and like, I love what you said about story. The way you repeated that story a few times, because because to me, you know, copywriting is still kind of new, but I've always liked, liked writing. Loved writing. Uh, I was doing more fiction, poetry, songwriting. Back, uh, back when I was younger and never came across copywriting, even though I was in marketing in the wine business for seven years, but never came across the term. But I've always been writing and, and stories have always been very central to it. Uh, and what I'm doing right now, this whole you know, found money in the list thing, I'll start right there uh, and then go backwards a bit. Um, but the, the found money in the list thing is really cool. It's, uh, it's relatively new for me that I'm doing. But the idea is, uh, you know, is that when you have this low ticket to high ticket funnel, there's always people who, who buy the low ticket, go through whatever marketing sales um, team there is, but still never end up buying that high ticket on the back end. And at some point they fall off the cliff. They fall off the radar. They're not being emailed anymore. They're not, um, they're, you know, they're gone out the back. And there are often leads that have been, uh, you know, paid for in some way, whether it's through ads or whatever. So there's this, this leak of leads out the back, these ones that get away. So what we do is we come in and completely out of the way of the current sales system and all that, where we come in right in the back and have this back-end strategy to capture those lost leads. Very simply, we just do it with... Um, at its simplest, it's just email and a Google Doc. Uh, <clears throat> and re recapture those leads to fill the those empty high ticket seats in the program. And the best part about it is that we do it as a no upfront cost thing. So it's it's you know it's all about evaluating it at the beginning to see if it's gonna be a good fit. So if it's a proven offer that's been running a while. Uh, we don't work with any new offers um, or live events. So if it's a proven offer and there's good uh, traffic and flow, you know, coming in all the time, when that's the case, usually the business owner 
very quickly understands what we're talking about and, and realizes this problem that they have of leaks, <coughs> leads leaking out the back while they're concentrating on the front and acquiring new leads. These leads uh, at some point are just leaking out the back. And so it's a great problem that we fix. And so we'll come in and just run a simple test, you know, because nobody can ever say like, oh, this will, we're guaranteed this will work for you. So we run a quick test to see how it will work. And we do that at no upfront cost. Um, there's no risk. You know, the only, the only thing that could happen if, if, say, it's a total flop is that people will think, oh, there's something cool going on behind the scenes here, you know, that I, that I can't, uh, you know, it makes them curious, but that's, that's it. So it just builds that sort of curiosity. Um, and there's, <clears throat> there's hardly any work on the offer owner's side. Uh, all they have to do really is fulfill on the, on the offer once we deliver the leads on a silver platter, as we like to say. Um, and, and so, so yes, well, I'm always on the lookout for new uh, partners, new offers to, off, to invest in, um, because that's what it is on our side. It's sort of an, an investment uh, of, of, of the time. And then we work it out uh, on the back end through a percentage, uh, depending on how it is. So it's, it's completely found money that would be gone otherwise, and that we're bringing back in, and then just working out a split, uh, you know, depending on on the offer. Can you tell me? I mean, I think it's really interesting. Like, you know, especially because so many business owners are focusing on the front end and you know bringing more leads in, and like instead of you know nurturing and taking care of the leads that you do have. So, what is your approach? Like, how do you how do you engage with them to kind of find out what it is they do need to move into that higher ticket purchase? So, yeah, so it's all based on emotions. It's all like back to the story thing. It's all based on emotional connection between, um, well, on the one side between the, the um, prospect and the, and the offer owner and the offer itself. Like, do they, do they like the person? Do they like the offer? There has to be good synergy there. Uh, and then on the other side, uh, on the emotional outcome that that prospect desires the most. And so our job is to come in and figure that out. So what that means is, you know, we have carefully worked out messaging uh, and, and we email the people and then engage in, in a one-on-one -on -one, um, email conversations where we're gently nudging them for information to you know nudging them to understand better their relationship with both themselves and with the the goals that they want while at the same time sort of tapping them slowly towards the um high ticket purchase um and so we take that information and use it to then reposition the offer so sometimes the offer that we create afterwards that we reposition in the Google Doc looks quite different from what the offer owner has created because we're, we're, we're doing it on a one-on-one -on -one basis with these people and with what they really want. So we try to you know, strip away the marketing, strip away the, the, all that language that's, that's often used, the tropes of copywriting, all that stuff, and really get at what it is that they want, you know, where they are now and where they want to go. And that bridge between it, and um, yes, I think that's that. <laughs> that about answers it. No, no, it's super helpful because a lot of times, you know, um, the marketing can be a little bit more generic, or it's not hitting their specific pain point, and being able to pick up those pieces based on where they are, you know, in their journey, understanding their emotional side of this, you know, offer and connection, and giving that kind of hands-on, one-on-one. Uh, touch to be able to, you know, assure them that you're going to be able to help them. I mean, that's that's what we're trying to do here in the first place. And the, the only thing that really matters is that you're delivering the help that they need. Um, it's just making sure that it's a good fit. So I'm sure like while you're doing this, you're also ensuring that this program is a good fit for them and able to kind of walk them through whatever it is that they need to know um, to help them to get, get get to that next step, which, you know, a lot of businesses and business owners don't really have that time or energy that they're interested in spending on this. And it's not like a pushy high ticket sales team where you're calling them and like, you know, forcing them on the phone to like give you all these answers and, you know, respond this way. 
it's kind of it seems like it's a little bit more gentler approach can you tell us a little bit more like how you yeah exactly like it's uh i mean we're like calling it a phoneless sales system uh you know and these terms aren't mine like it's this whole thing if you want was created by uh travis sago some years back so it's his brilliant mind you know pieced all of this together and i am just uh an adoptee of it uh and work on on um work with some wonderful people uh, uh every week about this and so um hang on what was i going to say there at the yeah the story like we're getting at a lot of it is based around empathy like empathy is the real thing there like we like you say there's no there's no phone calls there's no um forcing them it's all empathy and understanding and leading them to make the des decision themselves like really strengthening the desire within them so that they want to do it so it's clear from the messaging from the beginning you know it's it's something that's not for every everyone like it's a it's a special we reposition the offer as, as something exclusive special for a select group of people so it's not for everybody and we try to tap into exactly what it is that they want and builds that story that intertwines their desires with what the program offers to um to really make it seem not make it seem but to really show them how it is meant for them at this moment in time and they really need to do it and then they make that decision Yes, exactly. It's a lot of what they talk about in uh, Nothing Held Back and stuff too, is like you're going in a lot of groups. I mean, this is this is right. the more custom tailored form of marketing and that like, you know, you're getting them to the desired outcome, but you're listening, you know, you're giving that that space for the empathy and the emotional journey and holding space for them while they're on that journey and taking them through understanding the pieces that they need to understand to get to high ticket because it became a point where i feel like high ticket was just this golden thing back when you know ads were running so easily to get you those leads and it was like oh it was this high ticket high ticket high ticket but now a lot of people are really struggling with the high ticket because that you know the algorithms changed it's not as easy to jump in and just get those leads handed to you and and people really might need a little bit more extra hands-on touch so i love that you're doing this and walking them through that to get to get them to the outcome they need to get to and the fact that you're you know a marketer you understand all this you're able to you know express this with them but also you have a lot of empathy and understanding and you're just always been a very compassionate and caring person so having you kind of lead this charge i think is a really special way um, for business owners to really get to the nitty-gritty of what these people are looking for and and while you're doing this i know we've talked before is um that it also opens you up to be able to create different offers because you're hearing more of what they need and you can probably kind of guide them along that can you tell us a little bit more about that yeah, side? it's sometimes sometimes the sometimes we'll end up changing the offer or dusting off an old offer that they've that the that the owner has had you know on the shelf from some years back and uh and and using that or packaging that up in a bundle with another there's lots of different possibilities with it uh with this method um so so yes yeah, so it's 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 very uh dynamic it's fluid and um and we put a lot of work into just like you said into the understanding of of where that prospect is and where they want to go and and then how that can be best aligned with the offer or with something that's been created in the past that we can take off the shelf and dust off and and, and repackage um or 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 we might recommend you know adding things into the offer to um that will um check off all the marks of what the person is looking for so that could be uh you know that could be adding in live calls you know if they really engage with the person themselves that could be bringing the that person in so it's not just say training videos or i mean that's just an example like that but um um whatever it is that can make it the most appealing 
So you can use a lot of the content that they already have and repurpose it and use it as ways yes. to you're you're also so you're also like nurturing and educating them along the process. It's more a customized you know funnel and education system and nurturing to get them to where they need to be to be able to you know jump in the program and yeah. I mean, it is nurturing, but the thing is that we also always like to make clear to the offer owners is that we don't come in and interfere with the sales process. So these are people who, you know, say they have a sales team. These are people who might have been hammered with calls or uh, they might have received a ton of emails, but we don't interfere with any of that. You know, they can have that set up. Um, and even if it's the best sales team in the world, there's always going to be some at the back, you know, quite a few actually who uh, leads, who, who, who don't make that high ticket purchase. So that's where we come in completely out of, um, out of the range of what they're already doing. So there's no interfering at all. You know, we come in and get those ones that otherwise would be gone. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, that's, that's a good clarification and really good to, to, to make sure people understand too, is you're not interfering with any, you know, processes they currently have, but it's just kind of an add-on back-end um, way of bringing money back Yeah, in. exactly. Yeah. A, a bolt-on profit center in the back-end. <laughs> <laughs> That's always beneficial. We all need it. So I know mm -hmm. that you also, you know, along with that, you do a lot of like email marketing um, has been kind of your specialty for a while too. Um, do you ever kind of integrate the two or how do you work those two together? Are they... Yeah, I do a lot of email. Um <clears throat> especially in uh, for health supplements and for in the spirituality, personal development niche, um, which I enjoy writing in a lot. I, I enjoy both of those, actually. Um, I'm writing, I'm, I'm using, my latest offer right now for this backend thing is actually in spirituality. So, and it's, I really enjoy writing in that space. And here I'm getting to engage more, you know, we're going, well, here's, you know, a live example, if you want, we're, finding people who've purchased the product in the past and interviewing them. So we're going to try to find, you know, three, four people to really understand, you know, beyond what the offer owner is saying and beyond what all the product says and all that jargon, the lingo in real words, what it is the, you know, that people are looking for, what it is they got out of it. Um, it's funny. I, I'm just looking over here beside me. I have this, this little, things, a little picture frame. And I got this uh, after reading, I think it might have been an Anne Lamott's book, um, a writing book, uh, which I forget the name of. Um, but she would say how she always had a little picture frame, tiny picture frame of, you know, life. And that's, you know, I keep it here beside me for when I'm writing, because that's what I'm writing to. I'm trying to zoom in and write to this, this one person, this one moment in their life, rather than writing to, you know, something more general, which is where um, a lot of offer owners are writing to, you know, it's, it's it, here, we can be much more specific, uh, and really dig down into the, the nitty gritty, the pain points, the, um, the feelings, the, the unrealized feelings. Um, and so, yeah, with email, you know, same thing. Um, your specific question, what was it? Uh, strategy in terms of email? I mean, I guess I'm just curious, like how these kind of two play a part together. Cause like, you know, what you're doing, talking with them in the back end sales side, it's a lot more customized. Have you ever, you know, been able to figure anything out like similar to this using the email strategy or how do you usually use your email marketing strategy? Well, the email, yeah, it is different because when we're doing the email, it's going, you know, out to a big list. Uh, whereas the other way, we are, yes, going out to the list, but we're trying to narrow in right away. So mm -hmm. it has more of an exclusionary thing. You know, it's, we're trying to call in on, on, on a certain segment of that list. Um, the one, the one uh, where, whereas email, yeah, so we're going out much wider. So the messaging is a bit different, it's a bit more, uh, not vague, but a bit more open and, and, you know, so it can catch more. Um, but, but, you know, I still do always like to keep that 
one person in mind when I'm writing, whether it's to health supplements or for uh, astrology offers or manifesting offers, you know, to, to picture one person and write to that one person. Um, because, 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 because if it's done well, the reader recognizes themselves in it and, and feels like they're being spoken to. I think that's super important and really valuable, you know, to, to recognize that, that you are writing and also that you're writing to a person. It humanizes it. I think a lot of, or some, some writers kind of, you know, maybe forget sometimes that they're writing to, I don't know. I think. Yeah. It, it, oh yeah. Guilty. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, <laughs> uh, that often happens um, somewhere. I used to have it up on my wall, but, but um, there's a thing for one of the health uh, supplement uh, companies I write for like guidelines, you know, like picture it, picture it as if you're writing to your mom, because uh, sometimes, you know, some of those clickbaity emails can be really harsh and, or really uh, ridiculous. So, you know, trying to bring in, to trying to remember the, the person on the other end, the real person on the other end, who's opening that email and reading it and where they are and what they're feeling and, and who they are and, and, and what's going wrong and right in their lives and, and how they're going to feel when they read what you write. Would I send this to my mother? Mm -hmm. um, although, you know, to be honest, for some of the clickbait emails, I don't think I would, but still it's keeping it in mind mm -hmm. that helps to, to uh, attenuate some of the, uh, how it could be otherwise. I love that. I love that. And I think that plays a huge part in why this, you know, back end sales stuff is so successful for you, as well as your email marketing, because you do keep in the keep in mind, you know, the end user, the person, the desired outcome, but also their real their emotions. And, you know, sometimes be the people get a little intense with them, but I think that you do a really good job of just being, you know, kind and compassionate and persuasive to the ideal outcome that they is going to actually help them. Um so I think that's super, super valuable and important. And I'm curious, like, what brought you, what brought you to this world? What brought you to, you know, writing these off? Yeah, we jumped right in at the end. So we could go back a bit. Um, <laughs> yeah, back and, up you know, it's funny. It's interesting talking with you because it's no accident really ending up in this, this kind of back end offer where we're dealing with empathy a lot. It's no accident for me to be here at this place now because, um, because, because I've, well, I've been two years a copywriter and that journey started within these last five years of sobriety for me. And in this world of recovery, uh, you know, a lot, it's very difficult, especially at that very early stage. Um, it's very difficult. And, um, you know, I'm not working. I was working for two years at the, as a counselor at the, at the rehab that I went to. And, you know, during that time, there were a lot of people that I met, friends that I made who, who died, a lot of, you know, relapses. Well, it, that's the reality of that world. You know, I'm not quite as much within it now, but still, you know, just this year, there have been five or six people who, has, who I was fairly close to who died. It's, it's, you know, you brought much, you brought back a lot closer to that, that line of life and death and of what we're here for uh, or what we, you know, what it means to be a human being. And what's and and what it means to want to change, because you know back in my dark days I didn't I didn't I thought you know the way we are is just the way we are and it's and change wasn't possible, and it's really hard when you're in that spiral whether it's in addiction or in depression, uh, or or in anything else it's very hard to see things from another way, so to to see things differently. Um, it's like a cloud. It's like a, an enveloping thing, mist, whatever, that's very hard to pierce and to get beyond. Um, like a river carved in the brain. I, lo I love that analogy of the river. You have a, <clears throat> like when rain falls on a hill, it'll carve, it, it'll go down the, the easiest way. Water always flows the, the fastest, easiest way to the bottom. And once it finds a, a channel, once it finds a way, it'll just keep going in that way and dig the groove deeper and deeper and deeper until, you know, that widens and becomes a river and, and you know, flowing. And it's very hard to change the course 
of a river, you have to dam it up slowly while it's still spilling over all the place. And at the same time, you have to dig a, a, a new trench that's very thin and narrow at the beginning, and then that slowly widens. And then it's a constant balance between this damming up, you know, once you have it all sealed, there's still every now and then a brick pops up and you have to pop it back in. So it's, you know, between that, that maintenance there and then the new path, the new way. Um, and I mean, I know it through experience. I know, I know, I know, I now know that that kind of change is possible. And to me, that's the biggest um, miracle of human life that, 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 that you can change. You know, it's, it's a very simple thing to say, but it's really hard to, uh, to actually do. Um, simple, but not easy, you know, as they say. Um, so, yeah, so empathy for me came through this complete and, you know, complete another transformation in the way I think and deal with the world. Uh, although, you know, I'm very much the same person I was, I've always been, but, um, but I'm, I'm much more outside myself now, whereas before I was very caught up in my, my, uh, myself, my miseries, my whatever it is, um, because the particular stories don't really matter. You know, it's, it's more just <clears throat> learning to move through and beyond. Um, and then, and then I worked, I've worked with a lot of people to help them also, you know, come through that. And, and actually, you know, it's a, a niche, if you want, that I can see myself down the line trying to maybe create a program for, whether it's in sobriety, recovery, spirituality, personal development, something like that. Um, it, you know, I, I like writing in that world because it taps into this, this little, you know, flicker of hope that we can create within uh, ourselves and that if it's well nurtured, becomes a, a powerful flame. You know, silly analogies, but that's really what it is. Like at the beginning, you don't believe. And then through exposure, you get that little bit of hope. And then you believe more and more until you know. And it's that transformational journey that I love uh, seeing in others and being a part of, of, um, of bringing to them. I love that. I love that. And I love, I love both of your analogies. I, I think, you know, the river and the damming and the starting new river and change, as well as, you know, igniting and lighting and, and nurturing that, that flame of hope within yourself, you know, and you're not just doing that for, or within yourself, which it is incredibly difficult to learn how to do all that. So, you know, I really think an offer for you walking people through that journey would be really useful. Um, you know, not to go back to the marketing side, but it's similar to how you're walking people through their own journey. Um, but I think it's just something that a lot of people have a hard time with because change is so difficult. And that dam is going to keep breaking uh, or not breaking, but it's going to have leaks. It's going to have sprouts. And, and you just got to you got to keep pushing towards creating that new that new path and continue to nurture your flame of hope and continue to grow for yourself. Um, and make the changes that you need to, to make to be able to get to the kind of person level, you know, place you want to be in your life. You know, our life is all about what we want to, what we want out of it and how we want to create it. And it's, it's up to us to create that. Um, and I think the way that you kind of walk people through this journey uh, is really incredibly valuable. And, you know, you're doing it in your marketing and your sales, but you're also doing it in real life. Uh, you know, so you're doing it behind the computer, type into people, but you're also doing it with the people that you work with who you're helping through their own recovery process and journey. So I think that's really powerful and definitely something I would love to see you lean into a bit more. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. This, um, it's interesting. This next, you know, I'm coming up on two years now, full-time as a freelance copywriter, which is great. You know, the business is working. It's, uh, you know, it's very rocky at the beginning. It's, it's not quite that promise of uh, two hours typing away on a beach. Uh, never. <laughs> it's not, never. It's not quite that. Oh, um, I don't know who would think but, that. 
<laughs> yeah. And, and now, yeah, like the first year was tough. The second year was, has been easier, but right now it's just crazy hectic. Uh, so many different things I'm working on, different projects, uh, long hours. And so in this third year, my goal is to cut away a lot of stuff and really narrow down to one to three things. Um, for example, this backend strategy thing. Uh, and, you know, figure out what it is that I do best, which has been tricky for me. I've just been saying yes to everything, a little less so now, but still just taking on all sorts of things to, um, to, well, to, to gain experience, to build a portfolio, to meet people, to open doors. But now it feels like there are a fair amount of doors open. There's a bit of a draft coming from all over and I need to actually close some and figure out, you know, my path through this big, crazy, empty house of marketing and, you know, copywriting. I don't know that I'm particularly tied to just copywriting either. I've never liked the label. I've been always been a bit of a, a rebel in that sense. You have my punk rock band back in the day where touring Canada and the U S and we had an underground nightclub in Montreal. So I haven't really done things the traditional way. And I don't particularly want to label myself as just a copywriter. Um, you know, even, especially when it's something that's pretty new to me, I love writing. I love the flow of words. I love the effect of the right flow of words uh, the effect it has on people and that change that it can bring about, um, which I suppose is what copywriting is, but, but I don't uh, necessarily want to be just a copywriter. Like say right now I'm writing this lead where I'm going a bit beyond the copywriting and I'm bringing in more of a production side. Like I'm, I have, I'm writing it um, as if it's a video where well, it is a video script, but I'm writing it in, in a table with the, <clears throat> they copy the script on the left side and the right side, all sorts of video and audio cues uh, or suggestions. Um, so it's, it's more, it's, a, you know, I'm, I'm in, the, in this next year and beyond. That's all, well, it's still a bit unknown, you know, where, where I'll go, but I like that idea of being more than just copywriting, you know, getting into more producing ideas uh, and uh, well, we'll see where it goes. It's still very, quite vague there, but we'll see where that all goes. Yeah, that's everybody's journey is uh, we're constantly evolving to what the next level is. So, you know, you have copywriting skills, you have marketing strategy skills, you have a lot of you have the sales skills. So it's just combining all your skills to what that next journey and that what next, you know, offer and, and product and, and a way of helping people that you show up and serve. So I yeah. love that. Yeah, the way of helping people, that's the real key. The real key to it all is the, uh, the helping people. Um, I think if, if, if I, if you, if I can figure out that, you know, how I can best help people, everything else sort of falls into place. Uh, I've done a lot lately more of helping myself in the sense of, you know, I have to learn this craft more, but now I'm at that stage where I'm turning more outwards again and seeing how I can use what I've learned to help, to help people, to help make the world a better place, to, you know, to, to bring about transformational journeys within people. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of exciting. It is exciting. It's like, it's so much fun. And I love that, you know, you're on this journey of helping people and, and, you know, helping, I mean, we have to help ourselves in order to help others too. So that's always a part of it, but uh, I appreciate you sharing your journey with us. Is there, um, can I ask you a kind of off, off topic, off the beaten path question? Uh, sure, please. All right, this is, this is a fun one I got actually from my friend Carla Sing Song. Uh, she does the outsource. She did an outsourcing call with us on here, and uh, she got this from Peter Thiel. And so it's going to be a little strange, but it's fun. So okay, all right. <laughs> okay, what is one truth that you believe in that most people would disagree with? What is one truth I believe in that most people 
would disagree with? Well, that's a tough question. Uh, hmm. I think, I think, you know, I do really think that if you are just kind and good, you know, pretty basic human things, but if you can just do that, that it, everything else sort of falls into place. And I know that's, is that something most people disagree with? I don't know, but I think it's something that most people forget often. Um, you know, me too, you know, I'm no saint at all. But the good thing about recovery is that it's forced me to look at these things every day. I mean, I, I say every day, even though it might not be every day that I'm doing it, but it's, 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 it's a way of living. Because there's a lot of, you know, with, with social media, everything, blah, 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 there's a lot of stuff thrown out, you know, do gratitude, do this, do, do that. But the actual practice of, of it is, isn't all that common, I think. Um, and what it, what it comes down to, if you strip away everything, it's, it's just the, the decency of being a good and kind human being, you know, and, and if you go to whatever, the Dalai Lama or the Pope or whatever, it's all, that's what it all comes down to. Like, just, just, just be good to people. Be kind to people. Um, so, yeah. How's that? I love that. That's got to be my favorite response so far. I 100% cool. heartily agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I know I personally, especially with gratitude journaling and stuff, like I do my best to do it and positives and everything. You know, I journal every day, but, but uh, you know, it's not, it's not a practice we always remember in the moments. And, you know, I think that's another one is giving you. Yeah, yourself- it's hard to keep these, these things from the, oh, I should to the I am, like to this is me. It's hard to, to, to ingrain them fully like that. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of, you know, being able to step outside of yourself and, and see uh, or step outside the ego and, and those thoughts that are constantly going through your head and see that gratitude or that reality of the things that you're telling yourself and what, you know, being able to stop them and say, Hey, no, actually really grateful this, this moment because X, Y, Z, uh, it's definitely a practice. And, but I think that like you said, like just being kind and being a good human, like just go back to the basics. It's not that hard help others. And, and what you need will always come to you at least. uh, Yeah. 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 And remember, you know, I'm, like when I think all these problems I have now, these are wonderful problems I have today. These are the problems of my dreams from some years back. Uh, and you know, when I'm caught up in them, I can quickly forget that and get very frustrated and, and, and uh, stressed out about how much I have to do and how I'm messing it up and doing it wrong and whatever it is. But the, um, the actual problems are, aren't problems at all. I mean, they're just, Things that I need to figure out. That's it. There are there are no problems, really. Uh, just things to figure out, and that I'll know better how to do next time. I love that. I love that. Thank you so much, Robin. Thank you for sharing your story and journey with us. Is there, is there anything you. else that you want to kind of end us off? Um, I don't think so. I mean, that was great. You know, great popping in here. Uh, time flew by. I know we were saying at the beginning, like, oh, we'll keep it a bit shorter, but. Uh, well, I don't know exactly. I think it's been it's been a while. So this is great. Thank you so much. Really cool this to be on great. here and streamline to scale live with Michelle Lambert. <laughs> <laughs> this has been so fun. I really appreciate you coming here and being here for us, the Streamline to Scale community, and always being you know a good friend and supporter to me too. So. Um, anybody who wants to talk to Robin about his, you know, the way that he works with people or, you know, discuss finding some money in your list or some email marketing or anything else, Robin is a fantastic marketer and he'll be tagged in the video notes for this. So reach out and, uh, yeah, I really appreciate it, Robin. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Michelle. And yes, indeed, anybody reach out here on, on Facebook is totally fine. Uh, and, um, and let's talk. Michelle, thanks a million. Have a wonderful rest of the day and a wonderful weekend.
Thank you. You too. Have a lovely weekend, Robin. We'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye. Bye.